My kiln has failed. Fail. Uh oh. What are we gonna do? What's up guys? I'm John the Potter and welcome back to another pottery video. Do you remember my kiln schedule? Boop. Well, let's hope we can fix this guy. In this video, we have a completely full kiln that I glazed, but we came back after Nickel Dickel Day, our busiest day of the year yesterday, and we have a fail message on our kiln. So the fail message, according to the Scut manual, is due to a thermal couple issue. Whoa, sorry for the background noise. I would turn the ice machine off, but we really need ice after yesterday. It was like a 90 degree, super hot day, smoothies. We must have made thousands of smoothies yesterday. Anyway, so we're gonna open this kiln and unload what's inside, and then we're gonna try and diagnose the thermal couple issue. So if you're lucky, I'm gonna get to show you how to replace a thermal couple in a the next video. And if I'm lucky, then I'll just open this up and like tighten a few screws and it'll fix itself. All right, you ready to do this thing? So if you haven't already, that ice machine, seriously. I'm doing some giveaways on the Patreon page. So if you haven't checked out the Patreon, I know I started a Patreon, but now I'm doing stuff. So if you want a chance to win some pottery every month, head over to that Patreon account, the link's below, and check out the Patreon, see if you wanna become a patron. By supporting me on Patreon, you get all the insider access to John the Potter stuff, and you're also just help me so I can make better pottery, I can make better videos, I can make more pottery, and I can make more videos. And that's all we all really want, right? So anyway, check it out if you want. Don't if you don't. Let's open this kiln. Ooh, yeah. Well, it looks good. So when you get a fail message in the middle of a kiln that is slightly concerning, to say like, what if everything in there didn't get fired? What if it got fired too much and everything, all the glaze just dripped off? But so far, that's a beautiful looking bowl right there. All right, I'll set you down, let's do this thing. All right, here we go, kill number 20. Let's do it. All right, first thing we got is this nice big bowl, Canyon Skies. That works, that worked pretty well. Then we got a bunch of these glass coasters. So let's zoom in just a little bit. So these blue glass coasters, love that. Those all turned out really well. So I'll just put some felt bottoms on those. There's a set of four of those. Here's a big bowl. It's actually not that big. It's like a medium sized bowl, I'd say. That turned out really sweet like that a lot. So I did a lot of alterations to this. I did, you know, a finger all the way around and then I also made the fluted edges too, which just makes for super interesting glaze running on the inside and the out. But I don't care as much about the outside because I don't know, I just don't. Okay, and then here's some more glass coasters and for these, I've been like trying just putting like a little bit of the glass right in the middle, which, so I put like the green underneath the glass and then did the outside blue. Let's turn out. It's cool where it's like this dark blue right around the edge, the rim, and then that it's actually blue too, but it's like a different blue. And then I got a couple bigger things, like a big vase in the canyon skies, and then a big pitcher in that too. So this is, if you watch my one video, how to prepare for an art show, that was one of the things that I talked about was having different levels. And so one of the ways that you can have different levels when you're setting up your pottery or any art is to have different size pieces. So like have a bowl and then next to a base, which kind of is like flat, taller, and then some like glass coasters, which are super flat, and then maybe like some mugs. So just having more interesting variety. That's just, just, just beautiful. That, oh, it's so, I just wanna kiss it. That, that thermal couple does not look good. Um, next thing we got these sea green mugs. Those are these all turned out really, really nice. Like those are just flipping sweet, and they're just like they're good size too. 
not quite as big as the other, all the other stuff. The other mugs that I made so much. Comment below, what do you like? Camera here, facing Kiln right behind me, or normally the camera's like there. But got a bunch more of these mugs. All right, some more of these green mugs. Should not really nice. And then we got some Canyon Sky Minnesota mugs. Ooh, that's what it looks like when you get a good light on it. So that's the thing about these glazes, and I've heard a lot of people talk about this too, is that like, you'll have them inside and look at them and they're like, oh cool. And then you take them out in the sunlight and then they even changes the colors more. And you can see different colors, especially like in these, this is not from this kiln, but like this Northern Lights glaze, there's this like kind of pinkish and then there's blue and then there's these greens in there. And then you look, you bring it outside in the sun and all the colors like kind of even change more and become even more rich and deep. Let's keep going. This is a good kiln so far for having a fail message. I made this another set of these mugs that have like, it's the North Woods glaze. They have this, those like finger marks in them. Whew. So those turned out really nice. Got a few drips, a few drips. There was one drip like right there on the bottom, but otherwise this turned out pretty gorgeous. After I clean the bottoms of those up a little bit, put that light on there. These. Peace. All right, and then the last shelf is all glass coasters. These ones are fired for a second time. If you watched the last kiln unloading, I think I took these out of the kiln unloading before, and they just had some little bubbles, but now they are perfectly smooth, perfectly flat. Those turned out awesome. And then there's a few more. These are just like plain black ones, and they just have that in there. I kind of like how you get this like rim around the edge of where the glass is. Those are kind of cool. And then the last ones, these have the black around the edge, but then it has a green in the middle too. So a little bit variety of color there. I don't know, I think I like, I like, I think I like these ones better where they fill the whole thing with glass. And so far my theory has held up that making a gradual, a gradual slope on the out on the edge of this and then not putting too much glass in there. I haven't broken any since I've really started doing that. So I think that's the key. So I hope that that helps you with your glass coasters. And if you tried them before and they didn't work, I encourage you to try them again because they're super fun and super cool and they're take up like no space in the kiln. They're good. So there, there's my empty kiln and there's my failed thermal couple. All right, so now we're gonna switch into repair mode. So I'm gonna record this as a separate video. So go to the next video if you want to see how to replace a thermal couple or how to fix a fail message on your kiln. Anyway, look at all those fine, fine pots. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, like this video, comment below, tell me what your favorite piece was out of here. Tell me if you got any videos, ideas for videos after this next weekend when I'm in the art wander, this art crawl around Carver County. I'll have way more time to do some tutorials, to do some teaching, but yeah, check out that Patreon page if you haven't. If you wanna win some pottery, I'll see what I have left over after the art wander and then we'll do some giveaways on the Patreon. So, hey, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.